moving my tomato plants into their own little container that they will be growing in until it's time to plant them outside. I still have plenty of time because it's, um, uh, I think we're just entering the last week of March and my last frost date is May 15th. So what I want to do on this video though is highlight the tomatoes that I'm variety, tomato varieties that I'm growing this year and um, basically for my own in my own uh so i remember them i keep forgetting by the time i get so busy gardening i forget what the heck i grew and also i share a lot of these with family and friends so I'll do a quick review of uh what each tomato variety is that i'm growing this year all right so here we go the first one up is this purple rain tomato that is a new one this year i'm really loving the little starter plant this is one little plant look how sturdy this little guy is he's just got some really hardy and cute little leaves um i'm gonna read the description about that plant off of i actually got the seed from uh rare seeds .com, and this is a purple rain tomato and determinate tidy and compact three foot tall plant Smothered in purple beef steak tomatoes with beautiful balanced flavor. Fruit averages 6 to 12 ounce and are ideal for slicing our sandwiches and giving me doubled as a nice sauce tomato. Unique purple dwarf tomato uh, developed by Dean Slater. Interesting. So 8 to 12 hours of sun, sprouts. I've already got that going. 7 to 14 days easily. It's more like 7 with the, with the heat mats I use. And the ideal temperature, perfect for summer gardening, the depth to plant it, and so on. It is not frost hardy. I don't think there's any tomatoes that's frost hardy, but ooh, what a gorgeous tomato. I can't wait to, to uh, do a review of how that one tastes. All right, let's go to the next one here. All right, next up is the Brandywine, uh, pink Brandywine. Now this is an F1 hybrid seed packet I got from a grower. And uh, basically what F1 hybrid means, it, it's simply the result of breeding two different strands of a variety to produce a third variety. So that's what this is. And so the really cool thing about this F1 pink brand new wine is sometimes the heirloom brand new wine can, can get hit by blight pretty bad and other conditions. So this one's pretty cool because it won't, it shouldn't do that. And uh, the tomato just looks amazing. I actually grew this a couple years ago, and it is a beautiful plant. It gets huge. It gets about 36, 36 is short. Um, I had one that was about, uh, boy, well, 30, 36, 38. It was pretty tall. It, was, it maxed out my tomato cage in the garden, but here it is. And I love the Brandywine tomato because, um, it is just huge and they're so unique looking and they're really great for sandwiches and I, I I actually use them in canning and salsa too so all right so the next one is this rugged boy so the rugged boy you can tell on a couple of the starter plants it's going to be just kind of a husky uh plant now this plant uh it takes about 75 days to actually produce so a little quicker than the uh, better boy and a few of the other like the one next to here the golden meadow metal um this plant will get about 36 to 40 inches tall and um this is the plant produces a high yield of six to six to eight ounce red tomatoes they are very sweet meaty juicy and exceptional full flavor perfect for salads slicing burgers and sandwiches suitable for container patios or small gardens um, disease resistant tomato varieties and excellent choice for home gardeners farmers markets and market growers disease resistant yada 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 very cool all right so on to the next one, gold metal. I've, I did not expect this seed to actually germinate, but it did. So I've got quite a few of this one and I've had that seed actually since 2012, I think it was. That's why I didn't think it would germinate and it did. So I must be storing my seeds properly. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use the description from uh, Rare Seeds just because I didn't get these seeds there, but their descriptions are usually pretty accurate. That is what the uh, tomato looks like. It is a gold metal tomato, metal, metal? Um, 75 to 90 days to get a harvest from this one. So this one takes a little longer, like a brand new wine. Both of them are heirlooms, so maybe that's why. The one to three pound fruits are among the smoothest bicolor tomatoes uh, that they carry. And one of the most beautiful we have seen. It really is beautiful. I've grown this one. Yellow fruit is blushing with rosy red that radiates radiates from the blossom and lovely i can't wait to get pictures of this one the firm flesh is of superior quality being sweet and mild they have very little acid great fresh eating from the late legendary seed collector ben Cruisenberry, Cruisenberry, Cruisenberry. I'm sure I slaughtered that. Sorry, Ben. But anyhow, that's a pretty good description of that one. This uh, gold metal tomato actually is one of the tall ones too, like the brandy wine. So it will end up being caged out in my tomato area. All right, so moving on to the next one. I'm pretty excited about this one. This one is called the spoon tomato. And unfortunately, I've got this all nestled in here already. It is just the cutest little plant um let's see it just kind of looks ferny to me <laughs> a little starter plant how cute is that and uh this is a new one for me this year now this one i did purchase off of uh baker creek so i'm gonna go ahead and look up the description to share with you here we go what a cute oh look at the little babies these are gonna be so fun oh my goodness um this is the spoon tomato um it's an earlier one 65 to 70 micro mini fruit just the size of a tiny pea how fun this is going to be a fun one edible ornamental and tiny fire engine red fruit is arranged beautifully along a long spruce long trusses 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 i probably slaughtered that um what spoon lacks in size it makes up in flavor this is a variety packed with tons of bold, classic red, tangy tomato flavor. Um, another reason why it is a kid's favorite, kid favorite. That's probably why it's my favorite. I'm definitely like a kid. Um, spoon tomatoes pop in your mouth. When you bite into them, they are a joy to eat and grow. All right, so somebody did a personal review and look at the leaves on this, how pretty. That's so cool. It says probably the most unique tomato they've ever grown. It grows to about five feet tall and five feet wide. How cool. Um, I'm guessing they might be in a warmer zone too. Yep, they're in Florida. Wow, very cool. So this tomato might actually do good in my dome. So good thing I planted extra. So this would be a fun one. So stay tuned, I'll be sharing more. All right, let's go on to the next one. The next one is, oh yeah, I ordered this from Baker Creeks too. This one is called Hughes Tomato. Oops, where is he? He's right here. These look a little weepy. They've not been out in the dome yet. These have just been under my grow lights and on a heat mat uh, in the house. So the leaf variation color is kind of, eh, not super great. They'll get better once they get outside uh, in my dome. Hughes Tomato is the next one. Um, this one's a pretty one. Let me pull that All out. right, so here's a picture of that. It, it kind of reminds me of the gold metal a little bit, maybe just more yellow um than that so um 85 days indeterminate and fruity flavor and juicy texture makes this old time yellow half pound or one pound holy cow one pound beefsteak a favorite of heirloom tomato connoisseurs uh said to come madison county indiana and dates back to the 1940s it is a perfect slice or snacker and is even suited for soft or suited to sauce sauces very cool someone wrote on the reviews that it's a uh, pretty big it's a big big plant big tomatoes and plant so there it is this would be a fun one definitely we'll have to stake it because 
Those things look huge. I'm getting so excited. I'm just excited looking at them. All right, so my next one here is, um, I created this one before, but I don't think I have pictures of it. And it's an old seed. I didn't expect this seed to actually take, and it did, and they look really neat. Um, this is a Trinzo, Trinzo, I probably said that wrong. It's a fun little container tomato. Uh, in fact, my, my seeds came from the All America selections um, when I used to blog with them and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and read their description, but look at how cute. I know I've grown this one before. This is a fun one because this one you actually, um, it does really great in containers. Uh, or in raised bed gardens, which you want to put it toward the border because I think this one only gets to sleep. Uh, the plant height is only 16 to 20 inches. I believe this was one of the first little miniature um, tomato plants that came out on the market. Um, obviously, 2011, that was kind of the beginning of all that, I think, at least in my area. Um, so about look, that. look how pretty that is. There's more pictures, I think. Yep. Oh, look, look how cute. That is a pretty tomato. All right, so the next one I have, I went crazy. Planted way too many of these seeds. In fact, a lot of them I went ahead and compost because I have way too many. Um, this is the Think Pink. I think I just like the name and I went crazy planting them. Um, <laughs> the Think Pink is a cicada vegetable uh, hybrid tomato. Uh, it is a round pink tomato that has a beautiful color with an outstanding smooth taste that is well balanced between acidity and bricks. It has very high yield potential and excellent quality and a high pack out percentage. I'm not sure what that means, but the fruit have good shelf life and firmness without sacrificing the unique and delicious flavor. So very cool. The picture is just gorgeous on their website. And um, this will be a neat one. So be sure to check back with me and I'll share how the fruit produces for me. Poor little Aunt Ruby German tomato. This one looks really rough inside. I've got about a dozen of these out in the dome. So I only planted one up inside. Um, I don't know why I have half inside, half out. I think I was just still experimenting with how things were growing in the dome um, to see how these would respond and compare them to my inside setup. So anyhow, the Aunt Ruby German tomato I went nuts with. It's an heirloom. This plant gets fairly large. Um, well, it's about 38 to 42 inches tall usually. You definitely want to put it in a tomato cage and stake it, which is hard to believe from this uh, from this little baby starter that's, you know, just coming along. This is about uh, three weeks after I planted it indoors. And um, the really neat thing about the Ant Ruby is it really does produce a high yield. And I grew these last year and saved the seeds. So these are actually from my seeds that I saved. Um, the funny thing about the tomato was they slowly turn like a lighter green. They go from green to a, another shade of like lighter green. And I know my friend that I gave, a couple of my friends that I gave these to were like, I've got this one tomato and I just couldn't wait any longer. So I went ahead and sliced into it. I was waiting so long for it to turn pink or red and it never did. But I tell you what, I sliced into that green tomato and it was delicious. Well, that is what the Aunt Ruby tomato is. It stays nice and green and it's super yummy. And I'm excited to grow these again this year. All right, so there we go. I've got quite a few. I actually, I feel bad. I'm gonna actually compost quite a few because I literally have like 200 tomatoes and I went a little crazy with the seeds. I didn't really need that many. I've got as many as I can handle that I give to friends and family and for my own garden. So that's what I'm up to today. And I hope you will be inspired to try growing your own tomatoes. These have a little ways to go. We got about two months that they'll be inside. So I'll end up pinching them back and, and doing all kinds of fun things with them. So stay tuned. And thanks for checking out my video today. Um, please, thanks for checking out my video today. You can find this and other creative living ideas on my website at brenhaas.com.
I hope to see you there.